Hello, don't panic and welcome to another vlog. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these nice little dungeon drain pieces. Now, originally, uh, I was just going to finish these and paint them and do what I normally do and show you them finished and then maybe cut in some shots of work in progress talking about how I made them. But, I found I had a few extra of these washers. So, I took this as a sign from the Great Green Arkle Seizure that uh, I should do a tutorial video. So, here we go. So, you're going to need some washers. some plastic coated paper clips, toothpicks or cocktail sticks, just one actually, a sculpting tool shaped exactly like this, a pair of old clippers you don't mind getting damaged, pre-damaged is okay, some scissors, a pencil, a knife, some millipart, some thin cardboard. I'm defying convention here by using some from a biscuit packet rather than a cornflakes packet. And finally, some gel type super glue. This make is particularly good. And there's probably an item or two I've forgotten to mention. Okay, let's get started. So, the first thing I want to do is get the thin card and super glue down a washer to it. And just for fun, I'm going to see if I can line it up with this uh, little circular thing on the other side here. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw in on the cardboard roughly where I want the bars of the drain to go. So, about there. Sort of dividing the uh, bit into three and then turn the other way. And I hope my framing is good in this shot. There we go. Right. Now, let's uh, take some of the paper clips and start making the bars. Now, I'm using uh, plastic cozy paper clips here because they're a lot easier to cut and they won't ping everywhere and also they're easier to bend straight and do all sorts of other things with you might need to okay so let's uh let's figure out how long this needs to be about there get the clippers and So I've just sort of marked with the clippers there where I'm going to cut, and it's about there. Okay, let's see how well this fits. Yep, not bad. There we go, that's roughly where the line I drew is. So now, using this as a kind of measuring stick, I'm going to cut the rest of the bars. So just to make things easier at this point, I am going to cut away the excess card here. Not all the way down to the outside of the washer yet, and uh, that's just to make it easier to handle during later steps. 
Now you'll need four of these for each drain and I found I can roughly get uh, three or four out of each paper clip so you may want to do some maths there to see how many paper clips you're going to use but uh, I haven't bothered. Don't worry if uh, they've come out a little bit bent because that will actually add to the look of the drains in the long run. Okay, so now I'm going to start gluing the bars in place. But first, I'm just going to measure my first bar just to make sure it sits in there properly. There. That's great. Right, okay, so I'm going to take my super glue and I am going to do two little blobs um, just where the lines cross on my guide here. And then very carefully just push my bar into place there. There we go. Now I can take a cocktail stick and this is one of the many uses of the cocktail stick and just use it to smear the glue down the side of the bar just make sure it stays in place. Don't worry if you make a bit of a mess. Again, this will add to the look of the drain as you go. So now to do the next one and continue in much the same way. And there you go, it's already starting to come together. So the next stage is to mix up some milliputts. So while that's going on, we'll put this to one side and let the super glue set completely. Okay, here's our milliput. Right, you don't want too much of this, uh, but you will always mix up more than you need, which is a good thing. Because uh, it's better to have too much than too little and cause yourself problems later on. Uh, you don't have to use milliputts, uh, there are other sculpting putties out there. This is the one I prefer to use for stone type stuff. So let's get mixing. Okay, so once the milliput is nice and evenly mixed, then we can get on to the sculpting part of the process. Right. So, let's pry off some little blobs and uh, start placing them evenly around the washer. Okay, so that's uh, a little rough, so I'm going to use my sculpting tool here to uh, straighten it and flatten it out a bit, and just get that spread as even as I can around the edge. Okay, so once you're happy it's fairly even and, uh, you know, don't worry if it's a little bit rough. It's time to start sculpting the stones. So I've got my sculpting tool here. And I'm going to use where, roughly, where the little blobs of milliput join as the joints for my stones. So I'm just going to stab directly down and make the dividing lines between the stones to start with. Okay, so that's where the stones are going to be pretty much marked out. I'm just going to use the sculpting tool to neaten them up a bit and uh, trim away any little extra bit I don't want. Okay. 
and that's it so far. I don't know how well you can see, but um, there's an odd little bit on the edge there where a little blob I put on to um, even it out has uh, not quite joined properly. And I'm going to see if I can work it into feature, make it look a bit like a crack in the stone. So uh, let's go with that. It's the initial step of the stonework done. Now to add a bit of detail. I'm just going to um, flatten them out a bit. Now, as with the gaps, don't worry if they're a little bit uneven. Uh, it all adds to the look. And uh, a little bit of unevenness is very dungeon -y, in my opinion. Okay, now to uh, start adding some details to the stone. So I'm just going to take my sculpting tool and I am going to randomly move it and lightly tap it onto the surface of the stones here. There we go, sort of added a rough texture. So this is already a pretty good stone texture and if you want you can leave it like this. But I've got a couple of extra steps I like to do to make it match my existing dungeon terrain. So I'm just going to smooth these just a little bit. I'm not going to completely destroy the texture. And now I'm going to take a cocktail stick and uh, just blunt the end by bashing it on the table here. And now I'm going to take my blunted cocktail stick and just lightly jab at the surface. And that's the texture so far and I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. Just smooth it just a little bit. Now that should nicely match the texture on my Mage Knight 3D dungeon pieces. So a little bit of last minute uh, neatening up. And that's all the sculpting done, so I'm just going to put this to one side to set. And move on to the next step. I don't know how well you can see this, but my fingers are absolutely covered in milliput now, so I'm going to go wash my hands. Now, Milliput is supposed to take about two or three hours to set, but I tend to leave it overnight and get on with something else in the meantime. But, for the purposes of this video, here's one I blue peated earlier. Well, actually, I've uh, made 12 of these so far. Okay, so now I'm going to use a rat tail file to uh, just... Uh, do a little bit of cleanup. It's actually one of the advantages of using uh, milliput rather than green stuff is you can file milliput. Now it's time to use a combination of scissors and a knife to trim away the excess cardboard from around the piece. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to mount it on a cork so I can begin the painting bit. Okay, so here for reference are all the colours I'm going to use. Army Painter Matte Black Citadel Charred on Granite Code to Arms Slate Grey, Citadel Codex Grey, MP Bronze, P 
Pig Iron, Citadel Snot Green, Citadel Thracker Green, Army Painter Strong Tone, and Citadel Griffone Sepia. Okay, so let's get some black paint out and begin undercoating. Okay, I think that's pretty much covered in black, uh, so I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea while that dries. Okay, so with that dry, it's now time to get some colours on. First of all, I'm going to do grey for the stonework. Here's the greys I'm using, but um, you should use whatever brand and colours you prefer. These three greys will uh, give me the right kind of colour to match my existing dungeon pieces. Okay, so let's start with a heavy dry brush of my darkest grey here. Okay, now my next lightest grey. <laughs> and now a final highlight with the lightest grey of the three. This is a lighter dry brush. And that's the uh, base of the stonework pretty much finished. Now to get a slightly smaller brush and start working on the bars. I'm starting here with MP Bronze, but uh, Games Workshop's Tin Bits works just as well. Now I'm going to use uh, P3 Pig Iron to finish off the bars. There we go, almost finished now. And there you go, that's looking pretty good already. And um, if you're feeling lazy, you can leave it like this, but I like to take things one step further. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some green paint and some washes just to grunge this up a bit. Okay, so I'm going to take the snot green here and... Just add a uh, little bit of this to represent a patch of slime. And this is a great way of uh, covering up any bits where you might have been a bit sloppy with the glue. Okay, and now I'm going to take the Thracker Green Wash here and apply it over where I've uh, put that green paint for the slime and also I'm going to add a few little random streaks elsewhere now I'm going to take the army painter strong tone and just work it in the gaps a little bit not too bothered if it mixes a little bit with where I've got the green just dirty this up a bit. And finally, a few dabs of the uh, Graphone Sepia. And there we go, just gotta wait for the washes to dry now. And finally, here's the finished piece with Hlecky off a scale, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm rather pleased with how this came out. Uh, could of course use this um, in any dungeon where you want to 
add a little drain, a grate, or a well. Um, they're also quite good for just adding a little bit more um, interest to a uh, sewer-based dungeon. Or you can recreate the Well of Doom room from Warhammer Quest. And uh, they don't just have to be drains and wells either. This could, uh, say, release a jet of flame. Or perhaps poisonous gas into a room. <coughs> or whatever other crazy effects you'd like to use. And that's about it for this vlog. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you're subscribed to my channel, like this video. I need a goodbye catchphrase.